All right, so I've cropped my final stage and just clipped the edges a little bit to help everything line up. Now I'm going to use my timeline. Um, I'm doing the, the frame by frame animation. I'm going to make frames from layers. Scroll to the very end, hold down shift, select them all, set a timing that I think will work for all of them. I think point three works. Play it through forever. Make sure it's what I want. Paying special attention to how it resets. And I, I'll show you little things you can do now to play with this. I could change the timing anywhere. Like I can make these early frames take longer, but that won't make that much sense with the sun, right? What I could do is repeat Actually, I'll do this, yeah. Uh, I can repeat or duplicate these beginning frames a little bit. See, if you just click that kind of new frame, it will duplicate the last frame. And all that does is, is uh, add a little program there. And I can move them around. So I can have, have it go like this, then back to this, then like that, or duplicate this and move that down. So if I wanted to extend his drinking time a little bit, the problem is you're going to see that the sun keeps moving back and forth. But I'm not going to focus on that yet. Because I think this might be worth it, just to extend this time a little. And then I'll just fix the sun within those layers. So let me see, is that enough? If I don't pay attention to the sun, Gives them a little bit longer to drink. Or I can even just select all three of these, or all four of these, this whole loop. And I can duplicate all of those again. So it just loops them. <laughs> that looks a little odd, right? So there's a lot of animating you can do just within the frames. If you ever want to get rid of a frame, you just hit the trash can, or you drag it down to the trash. And I'm trying to figure out yeah, how I want to extend this. All right, now how do I make up for the sun not being consistent? Well, what I do is I take the first sun position, go to that layer, select it all, duplicate it. Now it's in every frame, um, erase around its edges, And at least in the second frame, I move it up above. And I transform it and kind of stretch it. And I'm in betweening it. Let's use that eraser. I don't know why the eraser is looking so weird. I think it's because I have so much going on. Or do I have a weird brush on the eraser? I don't think so. Oh, yes, I do indeed. And a regular brush. So quick to call it a glitch when really it's me all along. My tool settings. So I'm going to get a little heat distortion in the upper atmosphere there. From here to here. To here, I move it down again. And now maybe grab some of the sky as well from a future frame. Ah, this is, I'm wasting time. All right, forget all of that.
that's how you can mess with your your layers and and your frames and animate within the frames. But if you're sick of that, then I am. I'm just going to make my frames for my layers. Going to go with it. Going to get rid of this new sun I added. <laughs> play it through at 0.3 seconds, and then show you how to save it as a GIF. So that was the point of this. All right. So even though it starts quick, luckily when it resets, it has some time. Yeah, okay. So now you save it. That's your final stage. <coughs> Notice that it is at full resolution. So this is almost 11 by 11 inches at 350 pixels per inch, which means I could print every frame of this at full size, and it would look good. Problem is, that's not what we want for a GIF animation. We want it to look good on a screen. So we're going to change it. After we've saved it, we're going to change the image size to 8 by 8 inches. This is true for everyone. And if you have something that's not a square, make the largest dimension 8 inches. And we're going to make its resolution 150. So in order to do that, we have to check resample. So 8 by 8 inches by 150. And our screens are high def screens, so they're only 120. Okay. <coughs> it's going to reduce the memory load a lot as well. What's the resolution? 150. So half professional. Now if we view it, but more than double what screen resolution is. So then if we view it at 100%, you'll still see that it's larger than your screen. So this is plenty big. It's plenty amount of detail. Okay, next, we're going to say File, Export. So not file save or save as a GIF, because that will just save it as a flat image. We need to be able to put in that animation script. So we say export, save for web legacy. This is in newer versions of Photoshop. And that allows us to make a web file with the animation script written into it. So we want it to be um, a GIF. My preferred way of picking the colors is perceptual, but you can play around. It's basically a GIF is limited to 256 colors. You want to view it just so you can fit it on the screen. And then I like the quality to be bicubic smoother. And then I play it through. You can see how the, it will look a little grainier because of the limitations in the pixels. Not, not bad at all. All right. And the pixel slippage actually helps to kind of animate the water in the air a little bit. And then you hit save, and you're going to save it to the desktop as a GIF file. And that's already, already going to be the option. Okay, so keep your name, hit save, then you're going to test it. And if it works in a web browser, then it's going to work on PhotoBucket, and you can upload it. So how do you test it? You go to your, your desktop, you find the GIF, and you, I'm going to open it in Chrome. Come on. And it will open up in a window and it will play. And it might play a little bit faster than it played for you in Photoshop. It depends how many um, frames you have. I only had 24. So it should load fairly quickly. And basically at this resolution, 8 by 8 inches at 150, each frame takes up about one megabyte. So this GIF animation is 24 megabytes, which isn't unheard of. It's a large file. 
but it will go in a photo bucket just fine. But if you have like 70 frames, you might want to reduce the resolution even more, but never below 72. All right, it's going to work. Okay, the beginning of next class, I'll show you how we can make a clean storyboard out of that.